Think about the powerful speeches that you have heard so far. It can be any political figure like President Obama, Donald Trump or Narendra Modi or speech of your school principal or company's director. Can you try to relate these cases to find one common factor? Yes, you are somewhat thinking right that all speakers are addressing a group of people. Let me give you one more similarity. None of them use PowerPoint technology over the speech. But why were you able to recall only these cases when I asked you to imagine? Because they were influential enough to be remembered. Real Leaders Don't Use PowerPoint is a great book by Christopher Witt and this video will cover all its key takeaways. And if you implement them, you can easily sell your ideas and move people with your message. The author of this book believes that it is not the creativity or innovative slides, but rather it is the perfect blend of authenticity, stage presence and masterful delivery that captures audiences attention. Book talks about four essential elements. Let's start with first one, a great person. Let me ask you a question. Do you think you have to be a famous personality to be a great person? Not really. You don't have to be the president of United States or even the president of your company. You can be financial planner, student, a salesperson, doctor or engineer. It doesn't matter. All you have to do is to be the best you can be. Jenny runs a small consulting firm. So far her clients were physicians and when she speaks to physicians from stage, she gets a lot of prospective clients wanting to book an appointment with her because she speaks with confidence, project an upbeat attitude, throws some humor and speaks engagingly without notes. Physicians love her. But now she wants to attract more clients by working with chiropractors. She did some research how to approach new clients from stage and she came to conclusion chiropractors tend to be loser, more right-brained, less uptight type of people than physicians. She decided while talking to chiropractors, I need to project myself little warmer and have less facial expressions. So she anchored herself behind the lectern and kept referring to her notes and she was entirely humorless. The audiences applauded politely when she finished but almost no one went up to talk to her. After a lot of frustration here, she decided to speak the same way she always did, like physicians. Then lots of chiropractors started asking for her appointment. The lesson learned here you can adapt your message within limits to suit the different audience, but you can't change you. So before you hold stage, make sure what you want to say and how you want to say it resonate with who you are. That is what makes you a great person. Second essential element author talks about is a noteworthy event. That means you should work with people who are responsible for the event to refine its purpose, schedule and settings so that you know what to say. Christina, a relationship expert, was invited to speak to teenagers. She shared a story of her successful married life and what to learn from it. Well, the audience did clap but it wasn't as powerful as she usually gets from her audience who are married and in their 30s. She later found out few reasons why it wasn't a noteworthy event for her. First, demographics. Instead of sharing story of successful married life, sharing any of her teenage experience would have been more engaging as the audience was teenager. And second, WIIFM. What's in it for me? Lesson learned from married life is of no use to teenagers. Your audience will constantly keep thinking what's in it for me if I listen to this speaker. To make a noteworthy event, 
always make sure who your audiences are and if it doesn't meet your standards turn down the opportunity the third essential element author talks about is compelling message to create compelling message all you have to do is to find out the shortest distance between your belief and their minds and then project your message accordingly if you are a hollywood writer lucky enough to get in front of producers you might get 15 seconds of their undivided attention to pitch the concept for your script and that's not because hollywood producers are busy it's because they know that good movie tells one simple but powerful story if you cannot sum it up in one sentence or two it is not a good story and it won't make a good movie the same is true for a speech a movie tells one story speech develops one idea but it's got to be a good idea something that provides meaning something that is both intellectually and emotionally engaging that's what the author calls a big idea now just having a big idea may not make your message compelling if you want your listeners cooperation if you want them to say yes to your idea then you have got to be c l e a r clear about what you want them to do and why they should care one of the president of startup was given 30 minutes to talk about his business its services business model and financials but after 15 minutes few people walked out to take a break so that they get ready to listen to the next speaker one of the participant who was walking out of the room asked the other guy who was living at the same time do you have any idea what that guy was talking about not a clue he replied and said i don't know what his company does i don't know what its technology does and as an investment banker i don't know why i would work with the guy who can't even explain the basics do you hear that clarity of thought will make your listener sit up and listen to your talk if you can get your big idea fixed into the minds of listeners with clarity of thought then you found the shortest distance between your belief and their minds which becomes a compelling message fourth essential element author talks about is masterful delivery a masterful delivery depends on any number of elements such as planting your feet making eye contact and projecting your voice but it's so much more than technique it's really about projecting yourself your authentic self in most powerful way possible when it comes to public speaking there are actually two types of fear there is the kind that people usually think of that is stage fright it can produce physical symptoms like sweating trembling hands shaky knees a racing heartbeat difficulty breathing problem verbalizing but there is another type of fear that rarely gets acknowledged it's the fear that wells up whenever we show our authentic self it is an intense challenge to go in front of others and take a stand giving voice to the truth we have learned the hard way not knowing if we not just our ideas but we ourselves will be accepted or rejected no techniques or strategies are known to end this unnamed fear the only remedy is courage you can diminish stage fright and turn it into your advantage but you can never get rid of other type of fear neither you should try when you speak like a leader no matter how accomplished and experienced you may be you should always feel at least a tinge of fear it's a sign that you are being real it's a proof that when others play it safe by saying what everyone else is saying you dare to say flat out and unequivocally what you mean so for masterful delivery be yourself it takes hard work practice and a great deal of self confidence to be yourself in front of an audience in this highly technological world where powerpoint presentations have become the norm This book goes to prove that it is the power in your message that influences the audience and not a PowerPoint presentation.
This book has all the essential elements you will need in order to deliver a great speech. It is must have if you are a real leader.